hasn't gotten his way. Uh, and that is now prompting, uh, you know, a change in the Senate rules that uh, really, I think, would change the character of the Senate uh, forever. Uh, and what I worry about would be that the, you essentially have still two chambers, the House and the Senate, but you have simply majoritarian uh, absolute power on either side. And that's just not what the founders intended. So this president has come to the majority here in the Senate and basically said, change the rules. Do it the way I want it done. And I guess there just weren't very many voices on the other side of the aisle that acted the way previous generations of senators have acted and said, Mr. President, we're with you. We support you. But that's a bridge too far. We can't go there. You have to restrain yourself, Mr. President. We are on the precipice of a crisis, a constitutional crisis. The checks and balances which have been at the core of this republic are about to be evaporated by the nuclear option. The checks and balances which say that if you get 51% of the vote, you don't get your way 100% of the time. It is amazing. It's almost a temper tantrum. Mr. President, the right to extended debate is never more important than when one party controls Congress and the White House. In these cases, the filibuster serves as a check on power and preserves our limited government. The nuclear option, if successful, will turn the Senate into a body that could have its rules broken at any time by a majority of senators unhappy with any position taken by the minority. It begins with judicial nominations. Next will be executive appointments, and then legislation. This nuclear option is ultimately an example of the arrogance of power. It is a fundamental power grab. But no, we are not going to follow the Senate rules. No. Because of the arrogance of power of this Republican administration. I've never passed a single bill worth talking about that didn't have as a lead co-sponsor a Republican. And I don't know of a single piece of legislation that's ever been adopted here that didn't have a Republican and a Democrat in the lead. That's because we need to sit down and work with each other. The rules of this institution have required that. That's why we exist. Why have a bicameral legislative body? Why have two chambers? What were the framers thinking about 218 years ago? They understood, Mr. President, that there is a tyranny of the majority. If the Republican leadership insists on forcing the nuclear option, the Senate becomes ipso facto the House of Representatives, where the majority rules supreme and the party in power can dominate and control the agenda with absolute power. You've got majority rule and then you've got the Senate over here where people can slow things down, where they can debate, where they have something called the filibuster. You know, it seems like it's a little less than efficient. Well, that's right, it is. And deliberately designed to be so. I say to my friends on the Republican side, you may own the field right now, but you won't own it forever. And I pray God, when the Democrats take back control, we don't make the kind of naked power grab you are doing. They want their way every single time. And they will change the rules, break the rules, misread the Constitution, so that they will get their way. The Senate is being asked to turn itself inside out, to ignore the precedent, to ignore the way our system has worked, the delicate balance that we have obtained that has kept this constitutional system going for immediate gratification of the present president. This is the way democracy ends, not with a bomb, but with a gavel.